Hello and welcome to our channel Applied Forensic Research Sciences. I'm Dr. Pankti Patel, MSc Forensic Odontology, volunteer at AFRS. Today, we will be learning about Introduction to Human Osteology, Part 1. Contents of the presentation include What is osteology? Types of human skeleton? Functions of bones? And classification of bones. So what is osteology? Now, the human body is made up of several bones and cartilages. This entirely constitutes of the human skeleton. It is of two types, endoskeleton and exoskeleton. Endoskeleton is that which is found internally in the body. Exoskeleton is the skeleton found outside the body. In humans, this is very rudimentary, pertaining only to nails and the enamel of the teeth. The science that is concerned with the study of skeleton is called as osteology. And an adult human skeletal system is made up of total 206 bones. They are further classified into two types of skeleton, axial and appendicular. Now, speaking about the axial skeleton, these bones form the axis of the body and support organs of head, neck and trunk. Total 80 bones form the entire axial skeleton. The bones comprises are as follows. Skull, which includes the cranial bone and the facial bones together, which are 28 in number. Auditory ossicles, which are the malleus, incus and stapes inside each ear. Total 6 bones. Hyoid bone, which is a single bone. The vertebral column, which comprises of 26 vertebrae. The thoracic cage, also the rib cage, which comprises of the sternum, which is a single bone, and a total of 24 ribs. Appendicular skeleton, total 126 bones of upper limb and lower limb, along with bony girdles that anchor the appendages with the axial skeleton, are included within the appendicular skeleton. A total of 64 upper limb bones, including humerus, ulna, radius, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges of hand are included in it. Similarly, a total of 62 lower limb bones are included, which are femur, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges of feet. Apart from this, uh, a shoulder girdle, which comprises of the scapula and clavicle, is also included. And the pelvic girdle comprises of the sacrum, ilium, ischium, and the pubis bone. As you all can see in the diagram, there are two types of skeleton. The left hand side shows the appendicular skeleton and the right hand side shows the axial skeleton. Now coming to the function of bones. They form the body framework to provide shape and form to the body, support and transmits weight of the body, provides framework for locomotion and articulation, also gives attachment to muscles and ligaments, provides protection to vital internal organs like brain, lungs, and heart. It is a source of storage of calcium, blood cell formation within the bone marrow as well. Now let us see the classification of bones. According to position, as we have discussed earlier, they are of two types, axial and appendicular. According to shape and size, First, long bones. They act as livers for movement and locomotion. Example, humerus, ulna, radius, femur, tibia, and fibula. These are the bones which will form your upper and lower limb. That is your hands and legs. Short long bones. Same as above but miniature in size. They are similar to long bones but they are smaller in size. Example, metacarpals, metatarsals, and phalanges. These are the uh, bones which form your palms and your feet along with the fingers and toes. Short bones, small polyhedral and cuboidal like. They provide strength and compactness but limited range of motion. Example, carpals and tarpals. These are the bones which are found in your wrist and your ankle. Flat bones. Flat bones are expanded and flat like a plate. They protect vital organs and areas for muscular attachment. For example, sternum, scapula, ribs, parietal and frontal bones. These bones, when you look at the structure, are very 
thin and plate like they are mostly useful for a different type of muscles which are attached on them irregular bones irregular bones are classified because they do not fit in any other of the above categories for example vertebrae and some of the skull bones the name is given irregular because they are uh, very unique in shape you cannot categorize the shape of these bones in any of the mentioned categories thereby the name given is irregular then pneumatic bones pneumatic bones are flat and irregular with hollow spaces within which is filled with air so uh, some of the bones in our face and skull are very hollow and they are air filled spaces for example maxilla mastoid bone and the ethmoid bone of the skull next is sesamoid bones Sesamoids means seed-like, so they are seed-like bones. They are nodules of bones which are developed in tendons and they ossify after the birth. They protect the tendons from daily stress and wear. Now, uh, example is pisiform and patella. Patella is your knee bone, so it is the largest sesamoid bone which is developed from the quadriceps femoris tendon. Another type of classification is according to gross structure. They are of three types: compact, spongy, and diploid. Compact is also known as the lamellar bone. It forms the outer cortical part of long bones. Then is the spongy or the cancellous bone. It is the inner part of the bone that is less hard, and it is seen majority in the flat bones, irregular bones, and the ends of the long bones. Diploid bone. It consists of inner and outer covering of compact bone. with intervening porous layer of spongy bone it is seen in majority of cranial bones so basically diploid bone is the spongy bone which is uh, sandwiched between two layers of the compact bone the last classification is according to the development of the bone so bones can be developed by two processes in the body first is membranous or ectochondrial which develop from the membrane itself second is cartilaginous or the endochondrial bones which develop from the cartilage this section and the classification and development we will be studying and covering in the next part of the topic thank you so much do like share comment and subscribe to our channel applied forensic research sciences for more such sessions and interesting topics in case of any doubts you can post your questions in the comment section below